What's up, guys? It's Mystic Zach here. Welcome back to the fight, guys. I'm here joined by my co-host, Sugar Shot Evans. How are What's you going doing, on, sir? Zach? What up? What up? UFC went down, went down Saturday, and going into the fight, I predicted Sean Strickland to win like a last days of cold jab fest of a decision. And before the scorecards were read, I'm like, I got it. I almost texted the group chat like, I called it in your face, Rashad. <laughs> and then they were at the scorecards, and they were all 49-46, which scared me that no judge saw it 3-2. I was like. Huh, split decision, that, by the way, it's never happened in the history of the UFC, right? Yeah. Split decision where none of them are 3-2. Yeah. And then uh, Jared Kanyer is the winner. What was your thoughts on uh, the fight, the scorecard? What? what? I, th I thought that Jared won the fight. I thought he did uh, primarily because, you know, Strickland kind of deviated from his, his jab fest that he normally does. You know, normally he circles, have a heavy jab, and he, and he power loads the side that's the jab side, which is the right side. Rather, your South Poly, your Orthodox, you usually – load heavy with that jab and makes you, you know, suppress your fire and punch him back just because he's punching at you so much. But he didn't really do that this fight. He kind of was uh, getting pressured, and that's something you don't normally see. You know, he's a pressure fighter, but he was fighting on his back foot a lot that fight. And I feel like that may have cost him, and maybe he just wasn't feeling as confident as he normally is yeah. in the pocket after taking such a big shot from Pereira. Yeah, yeah, definitely that fight I think affected him. I saw Strickland shots affecting Cannoneer more than Cannoneer shots affecting Strickland. See, I seen it the opposite. I thought I thought that like Cannoneer landed the bigger shots, and I felt like that was one of, one of the main reasons why he was winning in the Georgia uh, That's the judges. Right. Yeah. See, at, whenever Strickland would hit him with a hard shot, he would like wobble, and then whenever Cannoneer would hit Strickland, I didn't see any like effect on him. See, I didn't see him wobble. I didn't. I, didn't, I saw him wobble. I didn't see him wobble. I, I saw Cannoneer wobble. You see what round? Yeah, a few rounds. <laughs> a few rounds. Yeah, no, I, when he hit him with some that. hard jabs, I thought. Yeah, I thought. I but thought I mean, like, it was razor thin, right? Yeah. If it, you it look was, at like, um, oh my, what's called MMADecisions.com, where like they take up the media. There's a lot of differing stuff, right? I think on verdict MMA. Yeah. It was dang near 50-50. Well, that, that's what made that fight so hard to score is the fact that, you know, you could have seen that fight any way. Just ba I mean, because those rounds were that close where you can be like, I thought that was for Cannoneer. I thought that was for Strickland. But, I mean, I, I felt as if, like, the judging wasn't so bad just based off the fact that it was just – it was really hard to call, to be honest. It was hard to call. I thought Cannoneer had a clear two, and I thought Strickland had a clear two, and then I thought there was, like, one swing round. I can see that. Yeah, four one's a bit much. Yeah, I can see that. It's a bit much, but uh, yeah, Strickland, you've got to throw more punches. Yeah, he just wasn't. He just wasn't himself. He just didn't seem. Yeah. To, he didn't seem to be himself. He didn't and seem to be the same guy who would just overload load his opponent. It seemed bodies. like he was fighting at a sparring pace too. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it did. might be too much sparring. It, you know what? You know what it was. I, th I think it may have just been uh, maybe. I mean, because that's how he gets ready. Like he's yeah. one of those guys who gets ready sparring. He doesn't train how everybody else trains and. You know, he has his own way of doing things, and it has worked for him, but I feel as if, like, he tried to have a little bit more of an uh, economical ap approach, and it felt as if, like, he was waiting from rounds three on to kind of, you know, step on the gas, and I think one of the announcers kind of alluded to the fact that that may be his strategy, and it kind of looked like that, but it just didn't look like after the third round he continued with the pace that he set in the third round. Yeah. Either way, not very impressed with either guy. <laughs> I didn't see any. I, I love how you say that just deadpan. Not very impressed by either guy. Were you? No, I mean, look, here, here's the thing about it. Both of these guys just coming back from, from, from a loss, right? And the, the hardest fight back is your first fight back after a loss like that, and especially after you've been starched like, like uh, Strickland. So you, you have those reservations, and you kind of have the, 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 the pause in your action. So it was expected. Kenya was kind of the exact same. You know what? He wasn't, and, I, and, I, and I'll say he wasn't because of the fact that this was the most I've ever seen Cannoneer go forward. Usually Cannoneer is the guy who sits on his back foot and looks for a counter shot, but this time he was moving forward. He was moving forward against Izzy, he just couldn't get anything off. I don't know. I, I well, didn't see much he activity. Could, he, could, he couldn't get anything off because um, Strickland's defense is just so Trump tight. No, I, I agree with that, but why do you go away from the leg kicks? That's the, I mean, because those were effective. Those, those were those were effective, and I don't understand why more people don't kick the heck out of Strickland. Consider the fact he has that like he's the so worst leg kick defense in the UFC. Yeah, I mean, sure. he, he, yeah. But the thing about it he is, he's like he's a so 21% fast, defense. Yeah. But I feel like maybe because he's so fast with his jab hand, people don't feel like they can really je uh, get that kick off. I thought his punishment. kicks were effective in the first two rounds. <laughs> I agree. I thought he found a good place for him. Yeah, I think so too. I don't know what you do with these guys. I mean, they're there. I, I would say Cannoneer is, 
you know, priming himself to get ready to jump in a position if uh, Pereira ends up beating Izzy again to jump in for a title shot. Can we shot? not do that? No. You don't think he has no. a chance with him? No. Can I don't we not? Know. Can we not do that? No. I don't. I, listen. He's thirty-eight. I, no. Look. I, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I think. I think Pereira has Izzy's number, but I don't think he's better than Izzy. And I don't think. No, he's, I agree with that. But I mean, Whitaker, like, you can't give Pan Nier a shot over Whitaker. Well, Whitaker has a fight already already lined up. Whitaker's but, gonna, bro. No one's beating Whitaker. It's not Izzy. I mean, I mean, Wait, this, the fights this, have to play this out. Paula Costa fight. It, the it, fights it, have to play out. Yeah. I don't see Paula Costa beating Robert. I Whitaker. don't see it either. But I mean, Paula Costa been on that secret juice. So. And then if Paula Costa beats him, then you got to give Paula Costa the shot. You have to. That's true. That's true. And then you got Hamzat. I, there's a lot of guys. I, I think, think Hamza would Hamza, have his way with I Kandir. think Hamza would have his way with most of the guys at 185. Yeah. And I think he should be at 185. Yeah. There's a lot going on. A lot going on. Definitely a lot going on. The fight before that, though, was a much better display of skills. Yeah, I mean. It was. Saruki so, so and uh, Ismagulov was, was a great matchup. I felt as if, like, um, you know, Saruki so and was just firing on all cylinders. You know, it, it's, it's something special to see when you got a guy like Saruki and who's so good at the ground, but then as good as he is on the ground, he can replicate that same thing on his feet with the creativity, giving different looks, and just looking as if like he's a world-class striker and grappler. I mean, he's going to be tough to beat. Yeah, a bit of a wet blanket, but effective grappling, but for it's, sure. It's, 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 I wouldn't say it's a wet blanket because he doesn't hold on. Like He don't just hold on just for nothing. Like If he's there, he's going to be dropping some elbows. He's, he does have a smothering style. I, I, didn't see as much of that, but that's because his Magulov is really good defense, right? Right. Like right. I've seen uh, Sarukian lay those elbows down on Alvarez, right? Joe yeah. Alvarez and other guys. So I think it was just a matchup problem that his Magulov is really, really good. Right. And I think he saw a dis- I think he saw a big advantage in the grappling, and that's where he went to. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's a way to kind of jam up a fighter like is Magulov, who has the ability to to strike pretty well, right? So you but I I think he would have won. On the, the feet. Strike. Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, he was winning on the feet, to be yeah. honest. He, he was, had some but... nice stuff. The, the jab to the body, the three to the body, yep. the, the um, jab down, right cross up. Yeah. There was some effective stuff from his mom glove that you don't see from guys in the MMA, really. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Some good boxing fundamentals. Yeah. So I was impressed with both guys. Yeah, I, I was too. Isma Glo- but here's the thing about that. Both of those guys are like in the upper echelon of the rankings when it comes to the 155 weight class. How stacked is that weight class yeah but we got to get the okay there's got to be a changing of the guard i think it's coming and i okay. think it's, i think it's coming but it's with like those okay, guys. why isn't justin gaethje fighting a uh, half yell physio yeah i mean that well th- that i think this this next group of guys is magulov um sarukian uh gamrot, gamrot and Fiziev. Uh, Fiziev, those guys are going to be moving up and fighting the guys Uram. who are yeah those guys are going to be starting to fight those guys the benils the the, the uh you know the the gay cheese Benil just Chandler. got through Gamrot. Shout out to Benil because yeah. Gamrot made Sarukian not look pedestrian but look human. Right. And then Benil just I mean beat Gamrot convincingly. Yeah. So but Benil, you've gotta give him a shot. But I mean that tells you something about the old guard though. That old yeah. guard may look like it may but be Dara kind Yush, of weak. But but Dara you took that leap. He yeah. did. Yeah. He didn't have to, I mean Gamrot's a tough fight, man. Right. He I don't is. see yeah. Justin Gaethje fighting that guy. I, mean, I don't. Listen, if they I, call him and say, yo, you're fighting Gamera, he's not going to accept it. Listen, Gaethje, my boy Gaethje don't back down from nobody, dog. Well, he's a know, gamer. You know, you got to talk to Gaethje. You got to talk gamer. to your manager, he's a gamer. Ali. <laughs> and you, you guys got to put Gaethje in a fight that's not Michael Chandler or Dustin Poirier. I mean, the kid is down to fight anybody. He just took some time off to kind of rest. His, when All you right. fight like Gaethje, you need breaks like that. Because like, you can't take the kind of punishment that he gets in a fight on a consistent basis. He's got to take the breaks. I agree. But he's down to fight Great anybody. Great fighter. Period. But lately, he's been in more Twitter briefs than fights. So we got to. <laughs> it's tough love. Great fighter. Probably the most entertaining guy in the sport. But we got to get, you know. Yeah, got to get, get him it. back in there. Lightweight's cracking. You know? It is cracking. It's the best weight class. Yeah, if you don't fight, then you lose your spot in line. Yeah. To me. It's the so, best weight class great in the UFC. Fight. Both guys' stock go up, especially Suruki, especially the grappling. Is Magulov. Probably some holes to fix in the grappling, but his striking is crisp. Yeah, absolutely. Both guys, I think, future top five. Moving on from that. We had some UFC, PI, B fights. There's no fights coming up, so, you know, we, we got to talk. We got to go full world star here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jake Shields beats up Mike Jackson at the UFC PI. Have you ever been involved in altercation outside of the octagon? Uh, no, not not like, not with another fighter, for sure. Not with, I mean, well, uh, look, ultimate well, listen. Ultimate fighter, we all saw that. Well, I, well I, I've, had, I've had my beef with, like, Rampage and Tito Ortiz when we had the fight and stuff yeah. like that, but it wasn't. It wasn't that physical, right? Like yeah. the whole Mike Jackson and and, uh, 
and, and, and um, Jake Shields beef. I mean, I, I, I actually seen Jake Shields in the gym, like right after that happened. And oh, he, did you? Yeah, like right, because we went to an extreme tour to train after, uh, after we got done doing the show. And uh, he was there telling about the beef and what happened. He was just like, you know, this guy, you know, he just goes off on, on Instagram and on Twitter and he's talking about I'm a racist and I'm a Nazi and all this kind of stuff. And he's like, I mean, where I'm from, you don't, you don't throw those kind of things around. You know, if you're going to say that about me, then we're going to have some words next time I see you. And uh, he said, next time you see him, he said, it's on site. And he went up to him and my, uh, Mike was still saying what he was saying. And then he just went after him. Yeah, I find it hilarious that Jake Shields still grapples in street fights. He's a beast. <laughs> yeah, he's still he's, the same. He, yo, he's he's an same animal. Same fighting style. He's an animal. Like he he he. If he gets on you, oh my gosh, you better hope there's people around because he's a, he's an animal. Yeah. But uh, yeah. here's the thing about it: you got these guys, right, who have become so comfortable with talking trash on the internet and not really. And this guy's a UFC fighter, by yeah, the way. Yeah, he's a UFC. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, Mike Jackson. He's a UFC fighter, but he's like, I don't know. He he's might like, be the worst fighter in the company. But oh, I mean, he's like, he's like bubblegum. He's a, he's really bubblegum. You know what I'm saying? Like he's he, he's the kind of guy you, you bring in to get beat up by everybody. Yeah, you yeah. know, unless it's CM Punk. So yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a CM Punk it, fight. Yeah, right. it's pretty funny the whole video. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a funny. Mike Jack's like begging you, you know, and we get off of him. Yeah, but I mean, you can't you can't be one of those guys, those, those internet heroes, just talking trash and not. To me, if you're a UFC fighter in the UFC PI, that might as well be sparring. You might as well, man. Yeah, like I, you can't beg for another fighter to get off you. Like nah, that's, that's that's soft. Nah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so that was pretty fun. I, you know, I didn't know if you had any insight, whatever. Anyone you're thinking about taking down like that or? Uh, nah. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm I'm a, I'm a pretty peaceful guy, man, and I keep I keep myself. Out of the drama, so All right. I ain't gonna worry Stay about that. Stay on the that. mushrooms. Yeah, Stay yeah. <laughs> All right. Zen mode. All right. Did you recommend any of those to Jake Shields? Uh, yeah, you know, absolutely. Chill him out. To a chill bit. him out. He needs yeah. that. He needs All that right. in his life. Facts. <laughs> Moving on from MMA, World Star stuff to boxing, uh, we had a big fight, and it was between two undefeated guys, uh, both in the prime of their career. And shout out to Frank Martin. Shout out to Michelle Rivera for accepting those fights. Right. Shout out to Errol Smith. Yeah. Shout out to everyone involved, right? Because we don't see that often in boxing two prime undefeated younger guys clashing. Yeah. And we saw it in boxing's best weight class, which is coincidentally also lightweight. Uh, Frank Martin took on Michelle Rivera. Great fight. Frank Martin looked sharp. Frank Martin looked fabulous. You know, yeah. the way he was able to control that lead hand, you know, because when you go against somebody who's the opposite stance, uh, you know, Frank was, was a southpaw, and it's all about the joust, right? The hand, the lead hand joust. And to watch Frank systematically destroy that lead hand, winning it first with the jab, and just you know winning the position at first, right? Getting over that risk, and then winning the position with the jab, and then as the fight went on, escalating the dominance with the lead hand to then start to land hooks, you know the the right hook off it, and um, you know it just looked as if like Rivera was just two steps behind. But I mean I can't get over the fact of how much Rivera he looked like Ali. He does look he like, like, looked like Ali. he looked like yes. a throwback Ali, but yes. It just wasn't in his favor, man. He didn't he was, look like Ali in the ring. No, 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 no. He, he was just late. He just couldn't. He just couldn't figure out the hand positioning. You know that that lead hand jousting position when you're going against an opposite um, opposite stance. It, it's tough. It's tough to deal with. And uh, he lost the battle. And he got. I mean, Frank looked like he was just on another level. Fast, sharp, strong base. Just. I mean, everything you want to see. Yeah, you could see what Errol Spence sees in him. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, and, and the knockdown he had in seventh round. Oh my gosh, blistering speed, that right hook, yeah. left hand. It was just, just really clean combinations and just really crisp, clean vision when it came to even just the anticipation, the pattern recognition that he's seen Rivera setting into and just dismantling it. Yeah. So at one thirty-five to one forty, we've got Devin Haney, right? We got Ryan Garcia. We got Tank. We got Tiafimo. We've got Isaiah Cruz. We've got Frank Martin. Yeah. We've got so many guys. We had Jermaine Ortiz. We gave Lomachenko a tough fight. We got Lomachenko. Yeah. You've got, oh my God, there's more. You got William Zapata. You've got Shakur Stevenson who just moved up. Yeah. There, there's a lot to unpack here. He calls out Tank. He calls also called out Devin Haney. Devin Haney's got a fight set up with Vasily Lomachenko. Tank's got a fight set up with Hector Garcia and then Ryan Garcia. So I don't see other of those fights happening, but there was a guy who just moved to 135. Pretty damn good. He said, I'll fight you. I'll fight you, Frank Martin. 
Shakur Stevenson. Shakur Stevenson. That would yeah. be a dope fight, man. That's a great fight. That would be a great fight. That's a great welcoming a great fight, fight for Shakur Stevenson. If he wins that, you can throw him right in for the title. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, but you think that's something that uh, Martin would take? I don't know. It's up to him and Spence, right? Yeah. I, I, I yeah. would be confident in that guy's skills. Yeah. Right? Because he, he's a great fighter. And to at least look good against anyone, you know? And, and the fact that he, he's willing to go in there and, and test himself against some of the best already, you know, undefeated fighter and, you know, not wanting to ride that, like, a lot of boxers, they want to stay, keep the record, right? They want yeah, to buff the record. Yeah, and, and he, and he could have done that, and he, and he put it on the line. So the fact he's willing to put it on the line, it shows that he's willing to risk it in order to be the guy. I mean, and look what Terrence Crawford just did. Yeah, you have to do it. Yeah. You have to do it. You have to be able to risk it a little bit in order to, to, to really get the accolades, and that's one thing you can respect about a guy like Canelo. He's willing to risk it in order to, to, to achieve the greatness that he sees in himself. Yeah, so I'll put him against uh, Shakur. And you know what would be a really good fight? George Cambosis against Isaiah Cruz. Yeah. Stylistically, I like that one a lot. Yeah. That's a dope fight. There's a lot of, I mean, Zepeda's a monster. He literally broke the record for punches landed against Jojo Diaz, who we interviewed. But yeah. there's, there's a lot here, a lot. I know. That's it's embar- exciting. It's, it's an embarrassment of riches. As an embarrassment of riches at lightweight. Same yeah. name as the weight class UFC, but 20 pounds apart. So yep. <laughs> I don't know what it is about that weight class. Moving on, earlier in the week, this was, it was like right as we were filming the fight, guys. Like, we couldn't quite break it down because it wouldn't even come out. Like, right. it just wouldn't have made sense. So, Nioa Inoue taking on Paul Butler. Paul Butler was the champ, man. Now, uh, Nioa is unified at that weight class. And he made him look D, D level? Oh, my God. Uh, listen, I I have never seen a better combination puncher than Inoue. Inoue, the way he throws his combinations is just blistering fast. And they seem to just hit every single part of the body. Head, 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 body, body. I mean, he's throwing like eight punch combinations. You know what I'm saying? He he's, looks like he's hitting pads. Yeah, he looks like it's look like it, it, it don't look fair. It does not look fair. Like no. he's just... I, I I bet I bet Butler felt like he was getting jumped in there like there was yeah more people literally in. like it it was crazy you know he was just super fast and then you know even with that approach of heavy volume and heavy punching Butler stayed in there he stayed in he there did. and I don't know how he stayed in there for eleven rounds he did stay he, in there for but his objective was to survive well sh- I, I so can a lot see of why. people were like you're the champion you, your objective should be to win not to survive. I mean, but, but when you, but when you get in there, right? When you get in there and, and you got a dog in front yeah, of you, exactly. and you and you're nothing but food, you know what I'm saying? You want to survive. You want to survive. That's yeah, that big, seems. I feel like that's a natural inclination for almost yeah. anyone. You know, yeah. you, um, easier said than done to get in there against that guy. It seemed like the first round, Butler was a little more confident, and then he got hit in the liver, and then he was like, "All right, yeah, let me survive." Yeah, I mean, and the the way that anyway throws those body shots, he puts everything in it because he don't waste any motion. You know what I'm saying? He's so fluid the way that he throws his combinations. You know, if he's loading up on that side to hit, you don't even see the load. It just comes through him. Bow. Definitely impressive display. Yeah, absolutely. But one of the very best guys in the sport, period. Yeah. Uh, put some respect on his name, Nioa Nue. I don't know what else you do with him. He's going to move up. Yeah. I don't know what kind of fantasy matches we can put this guy against because he's not that big, unfortunately, but... God, is he good? So good, man. I think I think you can put something really be good behind him and just kind of get him. I mean, I, I think if people would just see how just nat- – like, I didn't really get to – I wasn't on him like I was after his last – you know, that last fight. I'm just like, man, this dude is just something special. Yeah. He did a number on Don Air. Yeah. Yeah. He's nasty, period. One of the best guys in the sport. Shout out to Nioa Inoue. Put some respect on his name. When you're going over pound for pound list, you need to put him up there. Right, right in there. Period. Facts. Yeah, 100%. He made a world champion look like he didn't belong in the same ring. Pedestrian, as, as you say, yeah. right? <laughs> Which, there's not many guys doing that, period. Nah. There's not. So, moving on from that, this is our last show before Christmas. Yes. What fights do you want Santa to come down the chimney with? Whether it be MMA, whether it be boxing, okay. what are we hoping for? Well, um... I want to see John Jones back in action, but I just don't want to see him back in action with, with, with something that, you know, is just a moderate test for him. I want him tested to the gills. I want John Jones versus France is Ngannou. I want him to fight Ngannou. That's what I want. Him and Francis Ngannou, uh, big fight yeah. for the belt when yeah. Francis get healed. I mean, that fight's been cooking in the, in the making for a while, and I think, you know, it, it, it's better to get that fight now because – 
I fear that if John Jones or just kind of have too much time in between, it could it it could not happen. Yeah. You know, I mean, John Jones already been out for like what two and a half years now. Yeah. So thirty eight years. Three years now. Thirty eight. Oh, 30. Since he's fought. <laughs> Before the UFC was actually like yeah. invented. <laughs> how 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 is like two two and a half years? It's been right? a long. It's been a long. It's been a minute. Time. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a long time, man. So I would love to see that fight. Um, I also would love to see the fight of uh, Conor McGregor, Michael Chandler. I think that'd be a good fight. Or if not, Conor McGregor, Michael Chandler, Conor McGregor and uh, Masvidal. Masvidal. Yeah, because I don't I want to give Masvidal any fight. What? Yeah, I'm tired of him. You tired of him? Why are you tired yeah. of Masvidal? Because he keeps getting big fights for no reason. Yeah, because he's the man. No. Masvidal is the man, dog. No. You don't think so? N- not, not like he talks. Listen, he, he's, he's... They're talking? He's, okay, okay, can we talk about this? Go ahead. We haven't talked about this, and then I'll go over my dream fights. Okay. Stephen Wonderboy Thompson says that the UFC wants to book Leon Edwards versus Hori Masvidal right now because Kamar Usman's getting hand surgery. Oh, no. What are we doing here? No. You cannot give Masvidal a title shot off of that many losses. No. Three no. straight losses? He hasn't won a round. No. no what that, are we doing? No, that, that can't that can't be. That can't be. That can just that can just be like that can just be gym talk. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't even I wouldn't think that the UFC would even do something like that. So can we stop doing this with Masvidal? Can we stop pretending? Can he fight Gilbert Burns or someone good? If you want him in the title shot? Yeah, he he would need to in order to get a title shot. But I'm talking about McGregor here. I think it'd be a perfect fight for McGregor to come back to. Can we not? Michael doesn't deserve that much of a money fight. No, Michael yeah. Chandler deserves it. Okay, either or, either or not. And I can't. He's agree. punching guys and outside and I, and the I octagon. And I what are we dis- doing here? And I can't disagree with that. I can't yeah. disagree with that. We're committing assault. <laughs> come we're on. Aid, we're aiding and abetting to the criminal, huh? Yeah, come on. I mean, McGregor's on the same thing, but come on. Yeah. And they're, they're kind of two peas in the pod, but come on. And for my boxing pick, I would say uh, I would love to see Anthony Joshua versus um, Deontay Wilder. Wilder. Yep. I like that pick. I like that pick. How about you? What do you, what do you, what do you I'm got? I'm going to go with a different heavyweight boxing matchup. Okay. And I'm going to go with... What happens when an immovable object meets an unstoppable force? And that's the biggest uh, right hand in boxing yep. going against the best chin in boxing. That's Deontay Wilder against Show Joyce. That's what you want to see. What would happen when you put the strongest, most indestructible guy against the hardest hitter, hardest hitting boxer of all time? What would happen? What would happen? That, yeah, and I mean, the winner that... would get Tyson Fury, the winner of uh, Fury Usyk. And if Wilder can knock Joe Joyce out, he deserves it, right? Yeah. And if Joe Joyce can get through that guy's right hand, he deserves it. Yeah. And, of course, you do Usyk versus Tyson Fury. The winner of, of Usyk versus Tyson Fury is pound for pound number one. There's no doubt about it at that point. They are the top dog. They are the, the cream of the crop. I thought that fight was already like a foregone conclusion. So th- there, there's money talk. Okay. You know, and I don't know if Tyson Fury is going to be able to get the amount of money he wants. Right? Yeah. Usyk's not the biggest name. So hopefully we get that. Hopefully. It's on my wish list for sure. Of course, Crawford Spence. But Joe Joyce and Deontay Wilder, what would happen? Oh my gosh! What, what if he hits him with the right hand? D- d- does he go down? Does he like somehow stay up? I mean, like, I, what, I, what I, I, don't, I don't, I don't foresee anybody standing up to Deontay Wilder's right hand. But what, I've never what? even seen Joe Joyce look like he's affected. That's true. That's true. He's Frankenstein. That's true. That's true. <laughs> what is that guy made out of? It's the head, dog. Adam and Daniel? <laughs> That's a great fight. Yeah, it'd be We're a great already fight. getting tanked for Sean Garcia, so I don't want to um, do that fight, right? Right. Um. There's some great fights. Uh, like Isaiah Cruz versus Cambosis. That's like a low-key one, but that, that's a great fight, man. Yeah, that'd be a great fight, too. Nio Inoue against anyone. Maybe like Nio Inoue against, like, Butterbean. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Something how about, cool. how, about, how about MMA? Um, MMA, I, I'm not going to talk about McGregor. Okay. I'm not, because he's not even in the USADA testing pool. No, he's not. I mean, he's got to clean out a system first. But, yeah, you know, I, God. It could, be, it could be a long way. What are way. we doing here? It could be, a, he might not compete to 2024. USADA, what are we doing here, dog? Like, why is this our <laughs> conversation right now? Jesus. <laughs> so, uh, circling away from that, I love Cejudo Sterling. Mm-hmm. I'm excited for Henry Cejudo to come back. Yeah, and I yeah. know a lot of people aren't. I don't care. I, that was the pound for pound number one fighter last time he stepped in there. What he did to Marlon Marais, what he did to Dominic Cruz was mm-hmm. supremely impressive. Yeah. Seriously, he's got more heart, more determination than anyone in his skills to, to match. So. And he's training with Demetrius Johnson right now. Yeah. I mean, that, that right there, I mean, Demetrius Johnson is no doubt the GOAT. No, no doubt, doubt the GOAT. Skill-wise, there's no oh one. Oh, my gosh. No Skill-wise, longevity, mindset. Yes. 
outside the octagon. Like there's everything. Like this dude is just a stand-up guy, good dude all the way around. You know what I'm saying? An amazing fighter. Henry Cejudo couldn't be getting better training with anybody else than Demetrius. Yeah, and I would say my other wishes, a fight I mentioned earlier, Justin Gaethje versus Hafeo Fiziev. Oh, that'd be That's a banger. A banger. That'd be a and banger. And it's a striker for Gaethje, right? I'm not banger. trying to throw him yeah. to the wall. I'm not trying to give yeah. him a wrestler. Gaethje can strike with and anyone. Both those striker. guys have insane power. Mm -hmm. Both of them have, you know, good takedown defense. That's a great fight, and that's an old guard versus new guard. The winner, yep. that's looking good. Yep, I love to see Period. that fight, too. Hit up, the, hit up the UFC. Hey, let's make the wish list happen. Let's make the wish list happen. Yeah, also, Jake Paul versus Tommy Fury. I mean, we got to move past that, But, right? like, we, we keep no, saying no, we, we got to see it. We got to move past it. We still have to see it. We still have to see it. We got to get both three times. We got to see it. I mean, it's at this point, I it, think. It, it's, like, it's like the influencer boxing version of Tony versus Khabib. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what it's turning into? Yeah. It is, but we yeah, have but to I, see it. I feel, I feel like this. I feel like... At, it's been I, teased too many times. I feel like Jake has to... May, maybe Jake versus Diaz. No, because he's got to fight a boxer because no one shuts up. Yeah, Nobody but, ever shuts but up. But Tommy, Tommy, Tommy's not a real boxer he's like that, He's not in it all, though. Uh, I don't know. I think we got to see it. Okay, I'm so. a six-act. That's Shira Shot Evans. We just watched the fight, guys. Yeah.